Welcome all to uh, the Leverage webinar, March 16th. Today we want to uh, give a little bit of um, more information regarding zero knowledge API keys and our implementation and how we solve this problem. So uh, to start with, uh, just, to re just to refresh here what uh, API key is and what's the purpose of an API key. An API key allows delegation of a restricted set of uh, operations to other entities. Sometimes it could just be a, you know, a trading app, a portfolio viewer, uh, or something else. And this is a very important thing to create a comprehensive platform. If a platform doesn't have API keys, it is a very, it's a much smaller uh, opportunity for the ecosystem to become big. And for it prevents, uh, not having API keys prevents other participants from adding value to the system. So this is an example of, um, uh, how it would work in an exchange uh, and in many financial institutions. In most uh, institutions, there is a treasury management department or a CFO uh, or some other uh, group that is responsible for the actual control of the funds. And the actual people who are operating on those accounts, who are the traders or uh, you know, any trading bots, uh, algorithmic trading, they have only the rights to do the trades, but they don't have the rights to withdraw that amount. And this is required in many places due to regulatory reasons. And uh, also it's simply a uh, common and a good practice that would avoid doing things like um, having, you know, giving a trader uh, complete access to all your company's funds or even if you divide it up uh, it's uh, it's a very dangerous and hard to manage thing. So any large trading desk, uh, any large uh, hedge fund or institution always has separation between custody and uh, trading responsibilities. So um, this is how API keys work in a centralized environment. The client and server share an API key. It is, it is created normally at the server and the client is able to um, copy it, store it. And when it needs to communicate to the server, it uh, uses this, the shared secret to create a message authentication code. In this example, it's an HMAC, which is uh, very fast and very popular. And the message along with the authentication code is sent across. Um, the server can use the same secret to um, regenerate the message authentication code and verify that everything is working as expected. Now, there is a problem here in the DEX, there is no server or there is no place to keep a secret that no one can see except yourself and the party responsible. You cannot, for example, put a secret uh, in, in a smart contract. It would be everyone. So what is the, you know, what is the approach uh, to deal with this issue? Many DEXs that I've seen uh, have simply glossed over this little detail. Uh, this is an API, without an API key, it is highly unlikely that uh, many large institutions will ever use an exchange. So, um, you know, I think, um, I recall, I, we are the only white paper that has even mentioned a decentralized API key. So uh, what we've seen when we, whenever we had a, a big uh, customer, um, a, a user who is trading a significant amount of money uh, and every single institution, the first thing they asked was, 
and how do I use your API key? What is your um, process to separate custody and control? And this is not something that any DEX can gloss over and just pretend this is a, uh, this is a problem that doesn't need to be solved. This is absolutely a must if your platform needs to attract large players and to have a lot of volume. So the way we solved it uh, is essentially to leverage uh, a zero knowledge um, property of the discrete log problem. And uh, when you sign uh, anything with your private key, that signature can prove possession of the private key without actually disclosing uh, any other information. So in our case, what we do is we create another um, key, another um, private key that is stored only with the client. And the address that represents that key is signed by the key that controls the funds. So this will provide a trail for all the way back to the account key. This is very important that there is a direct or indirect chain leading back to the key that controls the funds. Every action that is um, done on behalf of the account needs to be able to be traced to the key that controls the funds for that account. Without this, there is no clean audit trail, there is uh, no traceability, uh, and there is definitely um, controls failure. So th this is the fundamental requirement for a zero knowledge API key. So once we, um, and we are going to show you how we have implemented it, uh, and before that, what I'd like to do is uh, hand it off to Swapman, who is going to show you the, the UX for it. The implementation today still uses, uh, uh, it doesn't use the UX set, it's not yet integrated. Uh, so we'll hand it off to see the UX, and then uh, we will give you an actual demo of the API key in, um, in working state. With that, uh, I'm going to hand it off to Swapman. Are you able to see the screen? Yes. It, okay, it's visible. Good. I just want to verify. Thanks, uh, Bharat. Um, so I'm going to show you guys basically the UX uh, and UI mockups that we have put together um, for how exactly you're going to register the API key, the zero knowledge API key. Um, and like, just to repeat what uh, Bharat said, I'm uh, presenting you the UI as we have it and the UX that we have designed. But when Nemal, um, CTO, is uh, presenting, he's going to be using a more crude UI just because uh, uh, we're going to be merging them together um, down the line. Uh, so this is just going to not be functional right now as uh, what I'm showing you, but what Nemal uh, shows will be. So when you are registering the API key, you need to choose which wallet uh, you're going to be using to access uh, uh, to access it through the browser. And so we wanted to make sure we were covering all the bases, uh, essentially. Uh, so we give three different options when you want to create a new API, uh, zero knowledge API key. Um, you can either uh, do it completely raw with uh, my Ether wallet or basically any other wallet. Um, where you just manually build the signature portion of the registration process and you have manually build the uh, registration transaction that you send to the uh, to the contract. Um, so that will make sure that no matter what, you always have the ability to cover it, right? However, most people probably will prefer to access their account uh, via MetaMask, um, everybody 
is a fan of uh, of this um, extension in the browser, which um, allows you to, to safely access uh, your Ethereum account. Uh, and also, of course, to cover the hardware wallets, which are very popular amongst anybody who has any reasonable uh, value stored in crypto, especially Ethereum. Um, so we also have included Ledger uh, as a path to be able to register your API key. So um, let's start with, um, rather than describe the, the, the process in general, let's just start with the MetaMask. Um, so actually, actually, let me describe the, in, in general what the process is, and then I'll go through the three uh, different paths. So the first step in all of these processes is that you have to sign the terms and conditions. So, you know, you have to, when you are creating your API key, which you need to have to access your account, you must accept the terms. And this is partly what, um, this is what um, Bharat has, has been working on with uh, Nirmal for years, is uh, this uh, provable, you know, compliance uh, stuff. Uh, so you can actually, by forcing people to cryptographically sign the terms and conditions, you have mathematical proof that uh, they have uh, accepted the terms and then you know any violations that you find then you have pretty pretty damn good proof that uh, they have committed the uh, you know an offense um so you have to sign the terms and conditions and then you have to submit that to leverage which then stores this as uh, you know a database of all signed terms and conditions which contains your account uh, and the specifics, um, the specifics of uh, you know wh which country you choose, uh, the timestamp, etc. Uh, and after you have signed the terms, then you must send a transaction to the registry contract, which basically you ha we have to generate the API key and then send that um, in an API encoded as a data field to the uh, registration contract in order so that the um, the leverage protocol knows that you are. Uh, you know, that's that's your API key, so that whenever uh, anything is happening with the API key, it's associated properly. So that's the main process, and I'm going to uh, start with MetaMask, uh, which is a nice user-friendly way of doing it. We want to make sure that the steps were not too cumbersome. You know, we want to make sure that there's not too much uh, fiddling around that's required in each of the steps. So, um, so basically, once you are loading and clicking MetaMask then you have to select your country. And once you have selected the country, it's simply a matter of clicking sign with MetaMask. And then you get a nice little pop-up here. will tell you to basically, here's, here's an example of uh, a message that the terms and conditions message that you have to sign, uh, which shows your account, the country, the timestamp, and the IP address. This is a, a message that you must sign with the account that you will be using on uh, Leverage. And then in that motion, when you have pressed the button and clicked sign, this is submitting also uh, this signed message to Leverage. So it happens in one nice smooth flow. So it's just simply select country. You have to accept the user agreement and read it, uh, of course. and. And then signing uh, is is uh, is a nice simple flow where you just have to verify it, of course, in MetaMask, and then you're good to go. And it's going to obviously just use your um, the address you have in your account selected in MetaMask. So you have to make sure it's properly, you know, it's not it's not locked, and that you have the right account that you want associated with the API key uh, selected. And that's the step one: basic signing the terms and conditions. And here's the second step where we are actually generating the API key. And here you have the ability to generate a different one, but basically you just generate the API key. There it is. You can generate 10 of them if you want, and you can save it so you have it stored in plain text. Um, we might also add a simple ability to asymmetric, uh, you know, symmetrically rather encrypt the, the key because there's some controversy about storing Key, uh, keys in plain text on your um, on your devices. Um, there was recently this issue that the Bitcoin.com wallet had some controversy about: uh, is it really an exploit, uh, if or a vulnerability rather, if you ha are storing as a wallet uh, the private key in plain text? Um, so we'll per perhaps we'll add some ability to, to have a simple symmetrical encryption on that. Rather trivial to do anyway, but. Actually, the earliest versions of the Bitcoin Core wallet, back when I was first uh, using it, uh, back in 2011, 
uh, there was not even the ability to encrypt. <laughs> that was not added until you know, after the second or uh, third year. Uh, so this uh, hasn't always necessarily been a strong principle. But uh, okay, so after you have generated the key, you have to acknowledge that you have saved the API key because it's very important. And then you, upon acknowledging that down here in the next, it then shows you the parameters for the transaction that you need to do to send the registration of this uh, API key to the contract. So then once you have uh, saved it, you click this, then you click send transaction, and then just like with the signature part, you simply get a nice pop-up with MetaMask, which tells you, please accept this transaction that the browser has sent, uh, and you simply submit it, and that's that. One, you one click on the button to, to get it up, and then you have to confirm in MetaMask. And then you're good. Then it's uh, the transaction goes to the blockchain, and then leverage in the, the, you know, the platform has to monitor the blockchain and wait for it to confirm, and then boom, you're ready to access it. Okay, so that's the that's easy mode. That's the probably the most user friendly way to get up and running with the the platform currently. However, uh, some people uh, don't trust MetaMask for whatever reason. Uh, they have other setups where they prefer to um, do things uh, more manually and have more control over the process. Uh, and in order for it to be properly decentralized, you have to be able to access it. Uh, you know, not with special software like MetaMask. And there's, I know there's some applications out there which limit themselves to, to only MetaMask. And I think that it's, we think as a team, it's important to, um, to really give flexibility that you, know, you can choose whatever your preference is, right? <clears throat> so this, one's, this step's going to be a bit more complicated, this path, but you perhaps get a nice uh, detailed understanding of exactly how this process works when you are registering a zero-knowledge API key with, uh, with leverage in order to, to trade safely without uh, uh, risking the custody of your, your private key for your main account. So first you have to enter the actual address that you're going to be using. <laughs> That's the basic part. So you manually just put in the address. Then you are selecting which country you're from, you're residing in. Uh, just like with the, the prior step. And then you have to, of course, accept the user agreement and then click sign. And what you are doing when you click sign is you're going to this other step. So this, this is uh, step one of three. So there's multiple steps. Uh, mo there's another step addition to what, the, what we just saw in MetaMask. So here, you get that text, remember that we saw a, a different version of the text that we saw in the MetaMask when you had to sign the message. Except because we are now in my Ether wallet, then you just simply copy this text over, put it into your my Ether wallet, and do a normal signature like, uh, um, you know, like, like you like you would with with any any other message that you want to do to prove that you own a certain account or, or whatever. So you sign that, and you get these, the, you get the response in the signature that has the SIG field, right? And you have to copy, it's gonna look something like this, it's a string here. You basically just copy it, put it in there, and the address is already pre-filled with what you had uh, entered in the first step. And, you know, after you have uh, acquired the SIG, uh, you put it in here, and then you're submitting the, the, um, the output, the signature of the message, which, um, MetaMask and Ledger are much more convenient to do that in nice one big step, but in here it requires two steps. So after you have uh, clicked next and submitted this SIG to us so that we have now we've received your terms and conditions, we've got cryptographic proof uh, that you are, you know, that you are accepting them, then you have to generate the API key. And again, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this in the, the prior path, but it's all locally generated, and you can see the code uh, of how it's being generated as well. It's, we're going, we have that all available, uh, so it's nothing secret, nothing black box. There's no, there's no shady library being used. That's not maybe not uh, properly random. Um, it's all client side. So you generate it. It's just displayed in your browser, and um, and then you uh, you have to save it, of course. And after you again have acknowledged it uh, to be saved, then 
you get the instructions of exactly what it is you need to do uh, to, to, to register this generated key on the blockchain. Um, because that's what leverage is using in order to, you know, there's a custody contract that has to interact with all this. And so you need to get it on the blockchain. So uh, just like where you had to manually uh, uh, perform the, the uh, crypto operations in, uh, in the prior step for the signature, you have to basically copy these parameters over into my Ether wallet and send the transaction manually. So we give you all of the different things that you need, any, whether it's my Ether wallet or whatever you've got, uh, it's going to require you to put in the address, the amount, gas, and this is the nice ABI encoded um, uh, data of this key that you have just generated locally. So it's not like it's just sitting out there on the blockchain and you can, you know, your, your API key is exposed out there. It's properly encoded so that uh, it's uh, nice and safe. And once you have then submitted this transaction, put it on the blockchain, then you have to just indicate that you are complete here. And, and here you get a look at what this will look like up here. After you have completed it, the it's awaiting the API key uh, registration. It's scanning the blockchain. It's um, you know, just waiting for it to, to, to confirm so that you, uh, you are able to access it in the browser. So the final path I'm going to show you before handing it off for the actual demo uh, on Robstein, uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you the, the hardware wallet way. Um, I know a lot of people are fans of hardware wallets as a way to, to uh, secure your crypto. Um, and we need to make sure that uh, this is uh, properly accessible and usable uh, with uh, Ledger. And that's um, a very similar process to what we saw in step in the first path with MetaMask. Um, so Basically, once you select Ledger, you have to uh, select which account you're going to use, right? So after you, oops, sorry, after you have um, selected Ledger as an option, you get prompted. And of course, if you're using Ledger, you know you have to be in browser mode and everything. And, and um, so you select your account, your address you want to have. So Ledger already generates you a number of different accounts. And you select the address you want uh, and unlock it and then the browser knows okay this is the address you want to use and then you also need to just like with the um, metamask select your country accept the terms and then sign it and then once you are signing after you at the very very first part you have to select the wallet and then after that when you submit uh, uh, when you when you s s go to the next step it's going to sign the terms based on the input you had up here and submit it in nice, you know, one, you have to, if not after you make the submission, you have to, uh, you know, on the ledger, you get a nice little, little screen for confirmation. You have to just give it a little, uh, you know, confirmation there to, to acknowledge uh, that you want the actual operation to go through. Um, and that then performs the cryptographic signature of the terms and sends it normally directly to, not, not especially on the blockchain or anything like that. It just sends it directly to ledger servers. After that, we are basically, this is what you've seen for MetaMask is the same stuff. You generate locally the key, you acknowledge that you saved it. And then when you register here with, with Ledger, you, this stuff is just presented to you, the parameters, not because you manually have to do anything, but just for your own you know, sanity checking the transaction parameters. And it's always good to double check the uh, whenever you're, there's any significant money, especially. Um, so you just register. And then you'll have to acknowledge it uh, uh, on your hardware wallet um, in order for the transaction here to be sent to the registry contract. Um, and then you're back to just waiting for the confirmation uh, on the blockchain in order to view and be able to use your account. So that's basically the basic UX of the different paths for um, for the API, zero knowledge API key registration process. And uh, now we actually already have built it, uh, at least for the MetaMask portion. And um, Leverage CTO Neymar is uh, going to demonstrate to you uh, just exactly how this, uh, this API key registration works. So, Neymar, I'll pass it off to you.
Uh, hi everyone. Uh, thanks, Hoffman. Uh, is it uh, my screen is visible? Just a question. Yep, it's visible and you're sounding good. Okay, uh, cool. Uh, so this is not the exactly UX or UI you saw what Swapman presented. This is the old UI, uh, but MetaMask uh, account registration and API key creation is working here. So the way we start is you go to uh, the website, you will be presented with chart and uh, order book, recent rates, but you will not able to place any order because you do not have any account with the uh, uh, exchange. So to do that, you will be going to register and will be choosing one of these options. So currently I'm using one of the option as MetaMask and I say I accept. So as soon as I do I accept, uh, it presents me with a screen from MetaMask itself saying that uh, this is the message which is going to be sent to server with your signature. And uh, if you agree to this, your account will be created. And uh, what it has is your country, IP address, what is your account ID. So this account ID is same as what you see in the, <clears throat> what is your MetaMask. Once you sign, uh, this whole uh, uh, message is sent to the server by browser itself. And you can see here, uh, this message is sent to the browser. And uh, sorry. So I'm. Uh, so method, uh, message is sent to the browser, and if you see, here is the message and signature. So do you see at the bottom here, maybe I can make this a little bit bigger. So, wow. Sorry for the inconvenience here, yeah. So here is the signature which goes to the server along with your message and server has already created an account for you. Once the account is created, you are presented with a screen uh, giving you some information that what you should do. And then you say, okay, I want to create an API, API key. Now, when you click on this create an API key, uh, on the browser, we generate uh, a pair of uh, secret and uh, the Ethereum address, and uh, we send that Ethereum address to a contract, which we call it as a registry contract. So if you see the address here of the registry contract is 5B40E, is the same one what we have deployed here, 5B40E. And uh, you can have a look at the source code of uh, this Ethereum contract, and we are actually making a call to a method here register so this register method uh, has a parameter api key and using this this api key i store users api key and account id so this becomes a single source of truth that what api key belongs to which user and uh, i can have multiple api keys for a single user so let's go back here and uh, uh, we will uh, submit this transaction to our option and once this goes we are waiting here for this uh, transaction to be complete i can click on this transaction here <clears throat> and it is showing that uh, transaction is still being confirmed and you can uh, see here i'm making a call to register address and what is the payment address uh, and uh, this is here my ad uh, address api key this is the api key which is being added to the registry contract. Coming back here, uh, now API key is generated and a file is saved on to your machine. This file has the information about your account ID, API key, and API secret. So all these three things are saved. At the same time, now you are ready to do trading. Uh, you can see your account ID here and one of the API key generated. This is your API key. And uh, whenever we are going to do any trade or making any call to server, this API key is going to be used. So 
let's go there and uh, we'll create an order now so i want to sell unfortunately it got disconnected okay so i want to do a sell here and uh, here you see all the cells have been executed also and i can see all these executions here uh, to see a uh, signature on the order uh, i can show that signature here i think there is some uh, network issue uh, with this here but uh, let's see so i go here and this is my frame let me do another cell so i do a cell and here the order is posted uh, looks like connection is still not up so this is what happens every time you do a demo it's uh, it's a development machine uh, which we have uh, put it on cloud and uh, it's not that fast also uh, but of course our uh, main machines will be faster let me see if okay here i can do something like i can say sign in i can choose a file and uh, it is again on the same server it's just that uh, i have opened up uh, i have logged into a new account uh, so i wanted to show you how messages look so let me sell sorry by uh, yeah actually sell and once i sell it you see this has been already sold and you can see my account messages uh, has nothing but uh, when i uh, send out a order creation in my post order uh, body and each order so this is one order and it has a signature here this is a signature on the order object itself which uh, you can see in the blog also something like that i have a vrns and using this signature i can validate whether this particular order has been sent by a user or not uh, also i want to show you all the communications whatever communications are happening here let's say i ask for uh, account and uh, you will see uh, that every call to the server goes using a signature where i provide a account id api key this is the v r and s of the signature so this is it uh, what i have for demo nirmal can you demo can you can open for nirmal can you demo just sorry? limit orders is up from the screen and canceling them okay that i can do it so let's say i want to create a limit order here and uh, this limit order is created and uh, because we use web socket uh, so that it is fast so here i have just posted a limit order which uh, creates uh, limit order with signature and this is what is stored and if i don't like uh, this limit order i can simply go and cancel it and it's gone now let me do it again i created a limit order it shows me here and i don't like it i can say it now i can actually create multiple limit orders and i want to cancel all those limit orders in one shot everything is done or uh, if i have created multiple limit orders let's say and uh, i want to selectively cancel few of these orders i can go and cancel them 
and then maybe later on all these orders now other thing if i want to like sweep whole order book for up to this much i can select uh, this particular price with the quantity 136 and i say sell now all of it just gone all these executions have been done and i have got the transaction done now by the way it is not yet integrated with custodian contract or other things it is still work in progress let's uh, open the floor to questions looks like there are no questions midnight on mars says no questions thanks for sharing very cool uh, thank you midnight on mars looks awesome thank you thank you thank you all um have in this webinar is recorded have a look at it and if you think of suggestions if you think of uh, critical feedback and we are always happy to uh, take your input and make the product better All right, thank you everyone, and I uh, will have this up on YouTube soon. Have a good day.